Welcome to Crafts with Ash. My name's Ashley, and today I am so excited to take you along with me as I decorate the coffee bar for May and June. If you haven't guessed from my last couple videos, the theme is bees. So I'm gonna be incorporating a lot of the DIYs I already made into my display. If you did not catch that video, I have a video of 10 bee-themed tier trade ideas that are so simple, but so much fun to make. I will definitely link it in the description box below and also at the end of this video. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. I have a ton of content coming up and I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. Then follow me on Facebook and Instagram and join my crafting community. Community. I show a lot of behind the scenes content that I know you'll enjoy. All right, so to begin, I'm gonna show you what I have right now. Now, before I show you, don't freak out. It, it, it does look like a lot, but once I have it all spread out and displayed, you're going to love it. So let's go ahead and show you what I'll be working with today. All right, so this is everything I have to work with. I may not use all of it, but the majority of it I probably will use. So of course, I'm gonna be mixing in my Ray Dunn uh, pieces as well, and I will tell you where I got everything if it's not something that I made. But I'm telling you, a majority of this stuff is in my tear tray video, so you're going to wanna check it out. So this is just a little overview of everything I think I'm gonna be using. And then I will be using two tier trays. There's kind of a smaller one right there and then a chunkier one right there. And of course, no bee themed coffee bar is complete without some honey. All right, let's get started. Okay, so of course the first thing I'm gonna do is wipe the whole thing down, including my Keurig. So for my coffee bar, I decided to go with the Buffalo check theme along with the yellow. So I'm gonna be adding this super cute runner. I actually got this in a two pack from Amazon. I will have the link in the description box below, but it is so long. But rather than cutting it, I'm gonna go ahead and just fold the ends in because I don't wanna ruin it just in case I wanna use it for something else. But I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the bottom so I can put everything on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put it upside down first. And then I'm just gonna fold in the corners to the sides. Now I do want it to hang a little off the ends, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, then after I have it laid out exactly how I want it, I'm just going to simply flip it over. Okay, now we're ready to decorate on top. So the first thing I'm gonna be using is this tear tray. It is a little dirty because uh, I just took all my Easter stuff down. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that off too. All right, now that it's wiped down, let's decorate it. So the first piece I'm gonna be adding to the top is my Ray Dunn Busy Bee little mug and topper. And this is the mug that started it all with my bee theme. I saw this at the store and I just had to get it. And then I just kind of took the bee theme and ran with it. And I'm so happy I did. It is such a bright and cheerful theme and I absolutely love it. Now I love to use these wood chunky pieces that I get from Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree as risers. Eventually I will paint them white, but I just threw 
that in the back of my tear tray and then added my Ray Dunn Honey Mug right on top. Now, I believe I bought that mug off of somebody, but I, so I'm not sure if it's in the store now, but I could imagine it is. Next, I added this yellow little riser that I got from Hobby Lobby and it was 90% off after Easter, so it was pennies and I got a bunch of them in all different colors. Next on top of my riser I added my little gnome that was a DIY in that tear tray video and I also made a mini little honey dipper to add to him as well. Then I added this candle right next to the little stand and in front of my honey mug. Then I decided to add some florals to the honey mug. So what I did was I just picked up some yellow flowers from the Dollar Tree and Baby's Breath, but to give it a little height in my mug, I just scrunched up some old newspaper and just scrap pieces of paper, stuffed it in there, and then I went ahead and put my flowers inside. Now what this did was add height to the back of my tiered tray. Moving down to the bottom, I added my little stack book set in the front. And now I'm going to build up the back. This is actually a topper that came on one of the Ray Doug mugs, mugs. So I decided to use that as a riser. So I grabbed this little bumblebee honey pot and I threw that right on top of the riser. And then I took my little free honey pot, pot that I made in the tiered tray DIY video and stuck that right next to my books in front of the bumblebee pot. Next, I was going to build up the back. So again, I took another riser and then put my little tea light holder right on top of it, but decided it needed to be a little bit higher. So I took this lid that I actually got from something from the Dollar Tree and just stuck it right beneath it and it was perfect. Next, I took this Let's Be Honest mug and stuck it right behind the other side of my books. And then I'm gonna be sticking my honey stirrers in it. So I just stuffed the mug with some scrap pieces of paper and then put my two DIY honey stirrers inside the mug. I absolutely love these honey stir <laughs> honey stirrers. I cannot talk today. Um, I You will not believe what I made them out of. So definitely check out that DIY video. It was a lot of fun to do. So then next, I took my very long <laughs> beaded garland. I did not mean to make it this long, but um, there it is. But I went ahead and just kind of sprinkled it on the books. I like to put my wooden bead garlands kind of like how I, I want to make it look like I just threw them there, but really, obviously, I am arranging them. But I just like it when it overlaps and just kind of clumps each other. And then I do like it when the the not the tassel part, but like the other end of the little garland is over the tassel part. Then I took one of my mini honey dippers and stuck it on top of the books. Next, moving up to the top, I forgot, of course, to add my little DIY rolling pins. That's right, I actually made these. I could not find them anywhere in Hobby Lobby and they were too expensive for Amazon, so I decided to make my own. And this completed this tiered tray and I absolutely love how it came out. It is so bright and cheerful. But what do you think?
Okay, now that we're done with the tear tray, it's time to move to the middle of the coffee bar. So that includes my Keurig. So I am embarrassed to say it has been a while since I deep cleaned my Keurig, but I'll get to it soon. So I'm just giving it a very quick wipe down. Make sure it doesn't have any spots or any dust on it. I mean, I do use it every day and I of course absolutely love it. Can't live without it. I made sure that this did not go into storage. It came with me. <laughs> After that was done, I went ahead and added a really cute bee mug that I got from TJ Maxx for only $5 and I thought it was perfect to go along with my bee theme. As you can see, I always like to have a themed mug on my Keurig. That way it ties the whole thing together. Now let's move to the other side of the coffee bar. For this side of the coffee bar, I'm gonna be using this tier, two tier tray that I actually got from the Bullseye Playground for $5. I cannot believe it. It is such good quality and I absolutely love it. My goal here is to cover the outlet and don't worry, we're gonna be doing something about this too. Of course, before I begin, I just wanted to give this a little cleaning too. Just wipe it down just a little bit. And then to start, I'm going to take my Queen Bee mug. I love this. I think it's so cute. And it does have the little crown topper. Next, I'm taking this milk jug, I guess you want to call it. It is so cute. It was only a dollar. It came from Dollar Tree. I bought a bunch of them. And then as you can see, I just wrapped some ribbon around the top. Next, I'm taking one of my jars that I DIY'd, and I do have Sweet Low in there. This is a coffee bar after all. So I just stuck that right on top. Moving down to the bottom, I have another one of these little honeybee honey pots. So I stuck that on the left side of my tiered tray. And then I grabbed this Let It Be mug and I thought it would be cute to include this bee right in the mug. So I did paint that bee. It was a different color yellow, but I painted it the maize color that I've been using on all these DIYs. Then I stuck my little honeycomb in the back and then I completed the bottom with another little jar and I put some hair ties in it so we can tie up my daughter's hair when she eats. She has a lot of hair. <laughs> so sometimes I like to switch out the ribbons that come with certain Ray Dunn pieces. That way it, go it correlates with the whole theme that I'm going with. So I'm just going to go ahead and take off this yellow ribbon and put on this buffalo tech ribbon. Easy peasy. I thought that little queen bee bird feeder was so cute or birdhouse it is just adorable so that's perfect to go next to my tiered tray to finalize this tiered tray I bought these yellow straws from the Dollar Tree recently and they do have little pineapples and I thought I was gonna pluck each one of those off but then I was like oh if I just turn them upside down you can't even see them so I definitely added those to the milk jug and I thought that that was a great addition and then the next straws that you're gonna see me add are ones that I actually hand painted these were red and white striped yes I know I'm crazy but it was before I found these ones of course, I just added more work for myself, but I did paint <laughs> each one of those straws. So I kind of liked incorporating them though because it did bring in the black. So I just stuck them in there and that completed this part of the coffee bar. What do you think? Okay, so now I went ahead and I decorated this part, but like I said before, I really hate it when these cords show. So now we're gonna go ahead and do something about that. I have a really cute idea in mind that might solve the problem. Okay, we're in my craft room, and to start this DIY, I used this tag. Now this came from Easter, but they do have tags in the store now. I actually saw them, and they were summer themed. But I loved the shape of this this tag at the top because I thought it looked like a like a honeybee. I don't know, it just reminded me of bees. So the first thing I did was I took this polka dot yellow and white scrapbook paper and I traced 
as much as I could on top. Now the whole scrapbook paper did not fit along the whole tag, so I will have to kind of piece it together. But after I traced what I could, I of course went ahead and cut it out. Real quick, this is just your reminder, if you're loving what you're seeing today, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. It also tells me that you're loving what you're seeing and it tells YouTube that you like this kind of content too, so it'll put more of my videos in your YouTube feed. So next I put the excess paper at the bottom and I just kind of used my fingernail to create a crease so I knew where to cut it. So then I did go ahead and cut it out and then now by using Mod Podge I'm going to glue down both pieces of the scrapbook paper on the back of my tag. Next, to help give me the nice clean edges, I took my sand block and I sanded in the down direction and this really helped to get off any of the excess paper and like I said, it gave me that nice clean edge. So I went ahead and did this around the entire tag. Now in, the, in between the little curves at the top, I did use an actual nail file because it was easier to get in, inside the little corners. So I went ahead and sanded the whole thing down. Okay, so ignore that big mess right there in the middle of my board. I tried something and it didn't work and I didn't feel like I was like I wanted to take you through that. So we're just gonna pick up where that left off. So what I did next was take this Buffalo Check scrapbook paper and I'm just measuring it so it's a big long rectangle going down. And then what I did was just cut it out and kind of just tested it. And then once I got the shape that I liked, I used my Mod Podge again to glue it down. Now I didn't glue it down right away because I did the next step after that. Once I got that cut down, I took just the back of the buffalo check and I am tearing the edges because I want this piece to fit evenly inside of that other buffalo check paper. So you can just use, you know, regular white paper, computer paper. I just had this left over, so I went ahead and just used this, but I just tore off the edges and then again, I just put it down, tested it and tore off any more that I felt that it needed. And then once I got that all measured down, I took these stencils that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now, the thing that I messed up before was stenciling and I just went ahead and painted all the stencils on and I didn't trace them out. So now I was kind of nervous to do it again. So this time I am tracing these out with a pencil first and then I will go back and color them in. But I am spelling out be our guest, B-E-E, -E, our guest. <laughs> so once I had these all traced out, I went back with a black Sharpie marker and colored it all in.
Once that was done, I went ahead and used my Mod Podge to glue down the buffalo check ribbon or paper onto the board. And then I Mod Podged the white paper in the middle of the buffalo check paper. I hope that makes sense, but obviously you can see what I'm doing. And I just used Mod Podge to do this too. After it was all down, I did go ahead and go over it with the Mod Podge so none of the edges or the sides came up. While that was drying, I took these puffy stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree and by using my black acrylic paint, I painted four of them because we are going to be using them as embellishments on the board. After they were dry, I went ahead and put them onto the corners of the white paper. Now they are sticky on the back, so you could hot glue these down if you wanted, but my Mod Podge was actually still a little wet, so it helped to keep them down. Next, I'm taking the solid black ribbon that I also got from the Dollar Tree, and I measured out in the middle of the bottom part on the yellow, and then I hot glued that down and cut it off. And then I moved up to the top and did the same thing. After my ribbon was glued on the front, I flipped it over and hot glued the, ed the ends of it to the back. Next, I'm taking this yellow and white twine that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to wrap it around a few times on top of the black ribbon. And I'm gonna do this on the top and the bottom. To complete my sign, I picked out a cutout that I got from Hobby Lobby that I thought would go really perfect up top. And before I hot glued it down, the bee that I chose had like light blue wings. So I decided to color them in with white, um, with a white marker, paint marker. That way it just matched everything better. And then I went over the black with a black paint marker um, if, in case any of the white got on it. And then after that, I went ahead and hot glued it to the top of my sign. I think that this definitely helped with hiding my cord and you're gonna see it coming up next. Okay, now we created our little BR guest sign, so let's put it into place. Now, of course, it's not gonna cover the entire cord because we still have some over here, but I really don't wanna stick anything over there because I don't want it to be near my Keurig at all. So there we go, that completes this corner of my coffee bar.
Okay, so now going back to the other end of my coffee bar, I have this really cute Ray Dunn Be Kind canister, and I just feel like I need to add a little height. There's just a very big height difference between the two. So again, I think I have a really cute idea on how to solve this issue. All right, now we're back in my craft room. So I started off with this hexagon shaped little sign that I got from the Dollar Tree because of course this shape just reminds me of bees because of the honeycomb and all that. So I pried off the welcome sign in the front, the metal word, and then I took off the screw in the back, the little hanger, and then by using my hair dryer and my scraper, I went ahead and took off the tag. After that, I went ahead and sanded down where the tag was. That way it gave me a smooth surface to paint on. After that, I gave this entire thing, the front and the sides, two coats of my black acrylic paint. After that was dry, I flipped it over and I grabbed these blocks that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree and I started hot gluing them at every corner. Then I decided that I wanted my tray to be just a little bit higher, so I actually added a block on top of the ones that I had already glued down. After my blocks were all glued down, I just painted the blocks and the bottom of my sign with some black acrylic paint. After that was dry, I flipped it on its side and I hot glued the buffalo check ribbon to the side of my tray. After that, I took my white and yellow twine again and I wrapped that in the middle of my buffalo check ribbon all the way around my tray. Next I created a bow with that twine and then I also created a bow with the buffalo check ribbon and hot glued both of them to one of the sides of my tray. After my bows were glued down, that completed this tray and now it's time to put it into place. I think that this little tray was so easy to make and it was of course the perfect addition to add to that 
part of my coffee bar. And no coffee bar is complete, like I said, without some honey. But I think it's missing something right there. How about one last very simple, very quick DIY? I picked up this little ladybug, I guess, from Dollar General, and of course it's not the right color, so all I did was use my maize chalk paint and black paint marker to go ahead and paint this. Now I did give the green part a coat of the white chalk paint because I did originally go in with the yellow and it just was not covering, so I had to put the white down and then I went in with the maize chalk paint and covered over all of the white and then, like I said, I went back with my black paint marker and kind of just defined the lines and cleaned those up as well. For the wings, I did give those a coat of the white chalk paint, and then I could still kind of see the black lines un underneath, so I traced over it with the black Sharpie. Now my little bee is finished and ready to go on the tray, so he buzzed right over, and once I placed him, this completed my coffee bar. I had so much fun sharing with all of you how I decorated it and showing you these last minute DIYs. I think they were the perfect addition. Let me know what your favorite part was. What do you think? I want to thank all of you so much for joining me today. I hope that you were inspired to create your own DIYs and to decorate your home. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft and decorate with you soon. Bye!